Hey everybody, what's up? This is Sal Plays MC, uh, and today we're gonna be making this cool cottage core house. It's a nice little tutorial. It's pretty complicated, and the tutorial might not make sense at every point, but honestly, as long as you get the general stuff from it, that's all that matters. So you're gonna start out, maybe pause it. This is your base. The wool blocks represent your inside wall, and the glowstone represents where you're gonna start with your logs, which are gonna be acting as your pillars and kind of being the main point of your structure. So I start by making smooth sandstone walls. I make them three blocks high. And then where all those glowstone blocks are, I place pillars four blocks high of oak logs. Now you can do this with any colors you want, but I think that for working in survival mode specifically, and in most landscapes, this works the best. So what you're going to do now is connect each of those wood logs uh, on the very top on the fourth level. And then on the third level, you're going to take oak stairs and you're just kind of add them right around the outside, just like this. These are going to act like supports for the next level of the build, which is going to kind of build outwards. So we want to build it two blocks out and you're going to see why. It adds a lot of depth, and it's also going to make the top level a lot more spacious and give us a lot more room to work with. This is really important when you're trying to think about roofing, especially as you're planning your build. You want way more room as you move up, because the more room you have to work with roofs, the more interesting you can make the top of the build, which is honestly where people's eyes focus. So the front door is important and everything, the bottom floor is important, but on a build like this, especially a house, uh, especially in this style, you really want to make the, the build kind of expand as it goes upwards. So we're going to build each of these logs in the corners four blocks tall, and then on the top we're going to connect them all, and then we're going to add these little outstretched log parts that you see here. You want the build and the structure to look like this at some point. If you didn't follow the floor plan exactly, uh, it's just going to be a similar style no matter how you did it. Then support all of the oak with uh, oak stairs. So this is going to kind of act like a support mechanism, it just is to look more realistic, to feel more realistic. Imagine we have these like uh, trusts just supporting up the oak logs, kind of like that. Now do what we did earlier and fill in the walls with smooth sandstone all around. For the most important part, we're going to start with the roof. Now this might be complicated, but uh, just follow the video and I'm sure it'll be fine. So what we're going to do is take dirt blocks, I assume if you're in survival, or grass blocks if you're in creative mode, and we're just going to put them right along the roof like this. So right like I did, put them right there at the very front of the build, right off the edge. Then what we're going to do is build it six blocks back. You're going to leave that first area that's overhanging just as one dirt block. And then every level up is going to go two blocks back. So it's going to be one, two, two, just like this. What you're then going to do is take your jungle slabs and you're just going to make a little tiny thing like this on the side. This is going to act as just a nice way to frame the roof without actually overtaking it. We don't need to do too much here. Oh, we want it to feel really natural. So we kind of want to leave a lot of that dirt showing underneath, especially because it mixes really well with the oak logs. Uh, and it also mixes with the sandstone, as well as the jungle. They kind of they work together, the browns work really nicely. So you want the roof to kind of look like this, and then you're going to start doing this framing style and the roofing style on each side of the build, symmetrically. So if you're looking at it from the front, both sides should look the same at this point, and the build should be 100% symmetrical. Now, you can build this up as high as you want. Uh, there's no specific way to do this, but what I do is I build off one block just like we did, and then go two back, one up, two back, one up, two back, one up, over and over and over again, until I have the roof pattern the same on each side. It's not very complicated, but you just have to make sure you're putting one, gr one dirt or one grass block on the front of each roof, and then going two back each time. Now what you're going to do is in this little part we carve in the center open, on each side you notice that it only goes the dirt blocks to the frame in the center. It doesn't go into the other roof. This is because we're going to add a little bit of structure on top. So following the same structure pattern we use in the base with the oak logs and the little bit of extension on the outside corners on the top, we are going to just build it about five or six blocks back. However far you want to make it back is fine. I've tried it with a bunch of different uh, sizes for how far I want to push the build back or bring it forward. And it doesn't matter how big this, this top area is. Honestly, the bigger it is, the more room you have. So make it as big as you want. Uh, there's a lot of ways to variate the roof and there's really no wrong way because I've tried a lot of them and I think they all kind of work. We're then going to do this 2-2-2 this two, two, two pattern on the roof. So it's just two blocks back, one block up, two blocks back, one block up, and then two blocks on the top. Then we're going to frame it just like this. So once again using jungle slabs. This will cap off the roof for right now. And then in a little bit we'll get back to it and kind of add some more detail. Now when you're looking at the back of the build it should look like this. Be pretty open, difficult to uh, kind of figure out what's there. We're going to add another roof right on that little outstretched part on the back. But instead of making it the same kind of roof as the front, we're going to make it a little steeper. So to do that, we're just going to build one block back, one block up, one block back, one block up. You know, just like a normal little tiny diagonal, right? So it's, it's really easy to do. And then we're just going to frame it just like we've been doing with the uh, slabs in the front. However, we're going to use stairs because stairs, when the steeper gradient happens, uh, are actually much better. Uh, slabs won't be able to get you that same curve. 
Now you're going to fill in the sides with oak logs, just like we've been doing. So act like the oak logs that are already there are supporting this new layer, and build it all the way up to where the roof is. Once you have it up to the roof, have it support the roof a little bit, just like this. And then we're going to add some support structures to that. We're also going to finish the top roof by finishing off where it goes. So you see how we did this? We built the oak log out one. That means that it is now going to support that part of the roof, that extension. And we can build this out and then put the final layer of slabs just like that. This way from the front, you kind of get that jungle uh, slab kind of peeking out and it will help a lot with the rest of the build. Now you don't have to do any of this stuff. This is just stuff I decided to do. I did some filling in and I wanted to kind of make it feel a little more closed. I also kept it looking a little weird like this because I wanted to have a skylight inside the building. If you just want to make it a flat wall, if you want to build it right into the, the roof and have it just be normal, like a normal house, 100% acceptable. I did it the first time I made it and I also really liked that look. However, this was just something cool that I thought to add. Now when we're going to the front to start adding details, you're going to want to make your door, it's a 2x2 two two door right in the front, it's symmetrical like we talked about. Then you're going to want to build out the area right on top of the door with some stairs for some details. Then on top of that, right where the oak log is, you're going to add just these two little oak stairs. They're going to be shaped like, like that, like the bottom part of a plus sign. And then you're going to put four or two grass blocks, depending on what you want to do, oak trap doors, and then your white stained glass if you can get it. If you can't, regular glass works, and oak trap doors above it. This will be a nice little porch area, a nice little, you know, garden right outside your window, so to speak. And then what we're going to do is go take oak trap doors and put them all around the bottom corners. So that way it kind of looks like there's a cap off on each one of them and it's very specific where the edge of the build is. Underneath all these, I like to use andesite or cobblestone walls, just one. And then do kind of a random amount of fences. So you can do one or two or three fences, depending on how tall the build is that you made. And uh, I like to keep it random, especially with these more natural cottage core style things. You want it to have symmetry, but you also want it to be very asymmetrical. So we can make it asymmetrical at this point by adding details that are different on each side that are kind of randomly dispersed. So sometimes I'll add fences, sometimes I won't add fences to the, the pillars. Sometimes I'll add one fence or two fences. And once you've done that, you're pretty much on your way. So you can add small details to the front of the house like this. And then you can also go around and add grass and dirt blocks as well as vines kind of randomly all over the house on different ledges, off different walls. And this is just gonna help kind of, you know, add some interesting texture. The last thing you can do is on the top where all of these oak logs are kind of sticking out and are bare, you wanna take a stone button and you just wanna put it on there. This kind of looks to me and the way I like it, like a nail, something that is making sense of why that oak log is there. So it's almost like the end of the logs have been nailed into to the wall and it's uh, it's working together on the roof what we want to do is then start adding some random patterning to the dirt we want it to look weathered as if it's actually part of the nature as if it's a natural landscape and to do this we just kind of randomly add dirt blocks all over the roof in in no particular pattern uh, we don't really want to get too close to the edge because we don't want it to be really really tall on the edges so i kind of build more towards the center like you see that's why none of the blocks on the far right side on the roof are raised i only go one block in and all the way over once you've done this on the roofs and you've started adding all these minor details, you're good to go do it on the top roof and then really start getting a little bit more intricate with the outside structure. What you're going to do on the top part to finish it off, if you can get it, is white wool. Just like this, you can fill it in completely or you can leave a little 1x2 gap or 2x1 gap, so to speak. Uh, you can also make it a 2x2 two two gap and just put uh, white stained glass or regular glass up there. It's a nice little skylight for whatever you're putting up there. For me, it's my attic, it's my storage area. So I like to just put a nice tiny skylight on both sides and that way I always have natural light coming in and then when it's nighttime it, it glows a little bit, it's very nice. On the left side I add this little 2x2 two two chimney and basically it's just a stone chimney with stone bricks. I like to use a mixture of regular stone bricks and also uh, the weathered and worn down stone bricks. On top I use anvils but walls work as well if you can't get anvils so if you want to get cobblestone walls or andesite walls and then put slabs on top of that perfectly acceptable and it will work just fine. Then on the very front, on the smaller part, the ledge, you want to put flower pots. Now if you are in creative mode, you can also add cobwebs to make the effect of smoke coming out. It's something I do a lot, but here I chose to not do it. Now on the roofs, we're going to take two walls followed by two fences, a redstone lamp, and a daylight sensor. And we're going to add one of those to each side, kind of randomly. I don't want to, you don't want them to be like even, right? Like I didn't want them to be on the same level because that's too symmetrical. So just kind of put them wherever you feel like putting them but they're gonna add a cool touch, especially when you see what we do in the front and how they all work together. 
Now you can add this little slit of a window right on the top and that's another good reason to have that top area be kind of wide open. You want it to have some more windows. A lot of this build is about natural lighting. This is what you kind of want the front of your build to look like at this point. And yeah. So what we're going to do now is start to work on the front build. What I like to do is take some path and just kind of make a random squiggly thing, you know, like an actual path, a beaten path. If you make the path straight, it's not going to feel right. Uh, it needs to feel organic and natural. So I'd put a tiny amount of uh, oak planks into the actual path for some texture, but not money. And then I take uh, stone trapdoors and I put them down so that it's kind of simulating uh, maybe like rocks or stepping stones. Then I'll take some smooth stone and some cobblestone with some slabs and I'll make my own little rocks off to the side of the path. I'll add some buttons, I'll add those lamps that we were using on the roof, and then I'll bone mill it all and I'll try to get it as natural feeling as possible. If you're already in the jungle when you do this, or you're already in the forest, this is going to be really easy and you're not going to have to do too much, but you will have to bone mill the roofs. You'll also have to bone mill all the different grass blocks you put all over your build. Now the reason that these redstone lamps are great is because when you use them on the ground in front of the build and you use them on the roof, as well as you know all the natural terrain you've already put in, it really makes it feel connected to one another, which is why I like it. I think that style is something that is, is really good for interconnectivity and it will make the build stand out. Now if you have bricks and you have granite, this is a cool thing to do, and if you don't, no worries. I just wanted to show it because I think texturing is really, really important to the life of a build. So what I do is I go around and I kind of replace random jungle slabs with bricks wherever I see fit. Then what I do, once I'm done with that, is I go around and I replace random jungle and brick slabs wherever I see fit with granite slabs. This way we're getting this really rustic texture from the build and we're kind of having this nice variation and patterning going on and it's it's a really great way to just add some interest to the build. It makes it from afar look a lot more blended, a lot more natural, and it brings it a lot closer to the hue and color of the dirt that's sitting right above it. We want the browns to kind of mix into each other. That's why we have the oak, why we have the brick, the jungle, the granite, and the grass. One more thing to note is that on the back, you're gonna to wanna to finish it out. So when you go to the back of the build, which you know is generally the least seen part of the build, especially if you're building it into the forest, like I did when I first made it, um, it's not too important, but you still want it to look nice, right? So when I added the skylight in this little carved in area in the back, I wanted it to feel very supported and very structured. So I went and I added two layers of oak logs and I just built them out like that so they supported one another, just like we've been doing on the rest of the build. The most important thing is to keep everything uniform and working together. Now on the inside, when you walk in and you look to the left, I added this nice little area with a, a bed and table, some small stuff. Then on the right side, I went and I added just this little kitchen area. I think the best things for the downstairs area is maybe something small like the bedroom or, or a little guest area. Uh, you could even do a table and chairs and a kitchen of some sort. So you kind of want to make that the serviceable place. But as you move upstairs, you can start to see it becomes a little bit more like a private study. And I think that the upstairs is always well suited, especially for, you know, a place you're going to live. So what I did is I just added these small details using bookshelves and fences, uh, using oak stairs for tables, barrels, and a double bed. Then on the ends, right above the front door, I just added some chairs. So there was kind of like a little study. And then I added this really, really big oak log going straight to the ceiling because I couldn't figure out a way to get up there. Up there though, there is a trap door and your chests, a hanging light, and make sure to light the build well. There's a lot of open spaces, so you don't want any mobs spawning. Then go back and add final details. Do what we've been doing all over the front. Keep adding lots of details, stairs, uh, grass, bone mill, pines. Make sure that every single one of those bottom corners is uh, trap doored and every single top corner has a button on it. Then you're just gonna keep going around and adding stuff and at the end of the build, it should come out feeling pretty natural if you've blended everything pretty well. If it doesn't feel right, maybe add some more grass blocks and dirt blocks, add some more bone meal, and maybe add some more vines. At the end of the, it should look like this. And it's a nice little place. Honestly, if you stick it right at the edge of a, a forest biome or right on the, the front of a sand biome, it's gonna look great and it's gonna blend in really well. So I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, there's no right way to do this build specifically. It's just a cool style to keep in mind. So let me know what you think in the comments. If there's any other things you might want to see. And feel free to stop by my Twitch stream and dress the salad. I build these things live every day. And also my TikTok.